Join us now on Flickr at flickr.com slash groups slash art of photography. everybody, my name is Ted Forbes. Welcome back once again to the Art of Photography. I'm going to do a recap this week on a conference that I was invited to attend last week in Paris called Le Web. If you've never heard of Le Web, it's an incredible conference. It's the, probably the biggest in Europe. Um, it's a technology conference, about 3,000 attendees, uh, which is really good size. There's enough people to where there's always a lot going on. There's really interesting things to see, but it's not so big that you feel you know overwhelmed or consumed by the end. In fact, those two days that the conference is presented on go by really fast. Uh, they had all the big players there, people like Google, uh, people like Twitter. Um, it was really, really awesome. Luik and his wife Geraldine did just such a wonderful job of putting this on. It's very professional. It's, it, I, in case you can't tell, I really liked it. Um, anyway, I was invited to come speak on this panel about photography by one of our viewers, a gentleman named Rodrigo Sepulveda, who's a very good photographer himself. Uh, and he ran a really interesting panel on uh, you know, a subject that's very dear to my heart. And if you have watched this podcast for a long period of time, You've seen the episodes where we've talked about mobile platforms and social media and things like that. And that's primarily what our, our, our discussion was focused on. Uh, if you want to watch the entire panel discussion, it's up on YouTube, and I'll actually embed it in the show notes for this episode on our website. So if you go to thepublicbroadcast.com, if you're not already there watching this, uh, you can see it all embedded below. Uh, but anyway, uh, a couple other people on the panel, uh, Madeline Nicholas, uh, who is the social media person for Kodak in Europe. Uh, they also had uh, Jean-Marie Hulot, who is the former Apple engineer, uh, who has a really neat website that I'm going to show you some stuff on today called Phot Photopedia. And a gentleman named Oleg Chekhov, who runs Photopedia which is uh, Fatalia.com is a stock photography agency and so some really interesting opinions and discussion that we had and we're talking about photography as a platform and you know some of the numbers that we have now you know on Flickr and in Facebook like you know you've got several billion photos on Flickr and then you get several million a month that get uploaded to Facebook and I think this is particularly interesting I think this is one of the most important things that's happened to photography in the last 15 years um, Historically, you know, one of the things I talked about in the discussion was that, you know, photographers or artists in general have had more or less two platforms before the internet of showing their work. Uh, you could you could get exposure through exhibition, so if you showed at a museum or an art gallery or something like that, but that's hard to do. And then photojournalism was the other one through the evolution of print, and uh, those are mainly the avenues that photographers had to get their work out and be seen. Uh, once the internet comes along, you have this explosion of things like blogs, personal websites, uh, things like Picasa and Flickr and Facebook. And and all these avenues of, of sharing photos that we have never seen before. And it's really exciting. Uh, one of the byproducts of this, unfortunately, is that you know you have a lot of everything. Like Facebook, I normally don't think of a place to go look at photography unless it's somebody that I know, uh, because you have family photos and party photos and you know a bunch of nonsense that that really is not considered good photography. And then you have the same with Flickr to an extent. And it raises an interesting question, I think, going forward in the evolution of social media is how do you separate that out? And it requires a little bit of curation. But what you don't want to do is sacrifice curation for participation. You, you want to have the number and the volume of people in there sharing their work. Otherwise, it's not successful. And so we were talking about you know some of the things moving forward. Uh, Kodak shared some of their technology, which was fairly interesting. Uh, Fatalia had some really wonderful you know results that they've had with, with selling stock photography. And I think one of the most interesting things that I saw was Jean-Marie's project, which is Photopedia. And if you're not familiar with Photopedia, it's photopedia.com. Com. And it works a lot like Wikipedia, except on a photography level. So there's articles in there, like on locations or objects or whatever it is. Uh, there's words written about it, but then the photography plays an integral role in this. And the way it works is much like Wikipedia, is that it's community contributions. So you can go in there, let's say that, that there's a location that you have some photos that you took that are really good on, you can submit them. And by community vote, it's community curation into which one is the best representative photo of whatever the subject is. And that one is selected, but you can go through there and view all the alternates, and it, it's really cool. And I think that that they've really uh, tapped into uh, something that can be successful here, uh, in, from what we're talking about with the subject of curation, uh, because you still have the participation, but because of the community vote and the community curation, you also kind of have this. Uh, it can be a drive, like you know, if you're a beginning photographer, you're just starting out, uh, you can be inspired by others, you can get comments from other people, you can really strive to make your work better. And I think that as a community, this is really successful. 
one of the a couple of the byproducts that I want to show you that they have that come around this. They have an iPad app now. Um, they actually have two. Uh, this is the Heritage app, which is free in the iTunes Store, and it's really cool because you can go through here and it's just a wonderful showcase of some of the, the the really awesome photos they have. I know this is probably not picking up wonderfully on the video, but the app is really nicely designed. There's some really really beautiful shots in here. It also just does geotagging and 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 ties in with Google Maps, so you can actually go look for locations. Uh, this can be inspiring too, uh, I think, as a photographer. For instance, if you um uh, you're about to take a trip and you want to know you know maybe what you want to go shoot on the trip there's some really inspiring things to to go look at in here so anyway but those are a couple of the things we talked about again I'm going to put the uh, the panel discussion uh, up on the web uh, I thought another interesting player on this was Kodak and some of the things that they're starting to do and Kodak is a really interesting uh, company I could do a whole podcast on Kodak I you know love them or hate them they're, they're one of the most important things that ever that's ever happened to photography I think they brought photography to the consumer level um, you know, those of us that are old enough to remember the Kodak moment growing up. Uh, you know, and what's interesting right now is I think we're hitting kind of a plateau where we've had things like Flickr that have been a very big success. I love Flickr, as most of you know. And it's like, what is the next generation of photo sharing going to look like? And what's it going to be like maybe on the mobile level? You know, I've done podcasts before. We've talked about, uh, you know, one of the things I love about the iPhone, it's not that it's a great camera, but that you can take pictures and upload them instantly to the internet and be able to share right then and there. You know, uh, one of the things I mentioned at the conference was, you know, in this day and age, you hear a lot of people grumble and say, well, everybody Everybody's a photographer, you know, everybody's got a camera. And, uh, you know, I think more importantly, everybody's a publisher too, because, uh, you know, the avenues that we have to get our work out. Anyway, this brings up some interesting, you know, kind of discussion points, and I'll talk more about this in the future. But, you know, kind of a challenge I would like to see for Kodak is to really blow this open. I think they could do it. Um, they had this Kodak gallery thing that kind of works like Flickr. And it is kind of more targeted to, you know, soccer moms and the amateur photo sharing person. It would be really nice to see some of this technology come down to those of us that are really into it, either as enthusiasts or as professionals. And, uh, you know, I think we're at a great time to do it. And it's going to be really interesting to see where we roll forward with this. So anyway, we'll do some more podcasts on this subject in the future and, uh, you know, do some show and tell and things like that. But uh, I just wanted to share with you guys, uh, you know, some of the things that happened at LaWeb this last week. Um, once again, if you've never attended the conference and you'd like to take a cool trip to Europe and, and go check it out, I highly recommend it. This is my first time to go and I just had a blast. So anyway, that's about it for today. And uh, it's been another episode of The Art of Photography. And thank you for for watching.